I want to take some time to talk about the effect of random UUIDs or uh, uniquely universal, universal unique IDs, especially for database indexes. Yeah? It's very critical to understand how what happens when you insert random universal unique IDs into your database and how that affect the performance in general and the effect here is mainly on inserts and writes and less more on reads and even the reads can be affected it depends really on the your workload and that's what i'm gonna shed some light on in this video how about we jump into it so i'm gonna focus on this video on random uuids that is to be very specific, UUID version 4. And that is basically when it's generated, even if from the same machine or multiple machines, those are completely random. Huh? So if you generate two consecutive UUIDs, which are around 128 bit in size, they will generate randoms that are absolutely nowhere near, nowhere near each other. You know, and it's very important to say the word number because eventually bits are think of it like they can you can think of it as a number and numbers can be compared, you know, and that's how you store them in the index. And even strings are eventually just numbers, right? Because they're either ASCII or UTF-8 and that is converted to bytes and that, that byte is technically a number. And that's how we work with this. Everything almost are numbers. So now we're not referring to UID version 1, which was technically ordered, given that it actually leaked your MAC address, which might not be a good idea, you know, security-wise. And I'm not also referring to UID version 7 or version 8, which is technically ordered, right? We're all talking about the popular UID version 4, which is, I think, the default these days. So with that out of the way, let's move to the whiteboard and explain what happens here. So what I'm going to do here is um, I have this whiteboard. I'm on Canva right now, and I'm about to insert these numbers. Think of these numbers are as UUIDs because UUIDs eventually are going to become numbers, right? And that's how we're going to compare them. Right? This effect is equivalent to inserting random integer numbers it has the same effect randomness in general hurts inserts but how and on what exactly this is only really hurts you when you're inserting you're updating an index so if you have a field and that field is a uuid and that field is indexed then there is a data structure here that's what we're going to uh, draw here that is represent the b tree of that index and i really not interested in the the guts of the b tree i'm interested at the leaf pages because that's what really matters right this is true for both uh, mysql index organized uh, tables where you have the primary index as the table itself yeah? So the table is technically an index and, and the leaf pages are the four rows right? and they have to be ordered. So that's the property number one in index. Index must be ordered. The entries, if you look at the page of an index, every entry that represents these keys has to be in sequence, has to be ordered. Otherwise, the index is absolutely useless. Right? And, and of course, you have to update the internal nodes and balance the tree accordingly, and you know where to insert that thing. You know? So that's the important thing. Indexes are ordered. If you insert random unordered things, bad things happen. What bad things that can happen? Let's actually explain that. Right? So here are the bunch of the UID I'm going to insert. I'm going to insert 10, 90, 80, followed by 40, 5, 70, and 60. And for simplicity, my leaf page size can only hold up to two elements, up to two keys. Elements is the right word, right? So that because it's a key value, right? That's how indexes work. So the key and the value, which is usually a pointer to the tuple, or in case of MySQL, uh, or Oracle index organized tables, IOTs, 
then you have the value as the full row itself in line in that page. Right? But for some for for simplicity, I'm gonna do this right now. Right? So I'm gonna add like this, right? If I said 1090, that's this page only holds two elements. So the first element is 10, the second is 90, right? And if it's full, you create a new page and you insert your stuff in it, essentially, right? So with that out of the way, let's actually walk through this. The first element I'm gonna insert is what is 10, followed by 90, followed by 80, 40, 5, 70, and, and 60. So let's do that. We our index is empty. I'm gonna insert 10. All right, sure, let's insert 10. 10 is done, right? What do we do next? 90, all right. 90, we balance the tree. Okay, 90 fits in the same page, right? Because we only have one page. And 90 is greater than 10. Let's make this bold, a little bit bigger. So 90 goes right after the uh, element, essentially, for number 10, right? Because they are in order. Nice, but now... We're done with 90. What do we do? We need to insert 80. Guess what? 80, after you, if you look up the index, 80 really needs to go after 10 and before 80. And guess what? This page is full. So here's what happens. If the page is full and you need to really shove the 80 between the 10 and 90, then you have to do something called page split. You need to split the page. And this is the worst thing that can happen in an index cases, right? The problem with splitting pages is you have to reorder and you reference everything again, right? It might, it might, look, might not look so bad, right? And you can optimize things in page split, but and people, databases still do that. But I'm going to do the most naive implementation of a page split, right? Which is literally copy, create a new page, right? And then insert the 80 here. And then this will, will have the 90, essentially. Right? So this will be a new page. You insert the 90, you move the 90 here, and then you insert the 80 here. So you split the page, you insert the value, right? So that's... And then you have to remember that this has a number, page 0. This is page 1, right? Because there is so much complication going on because this eventually lives in disk. And you need to use the offset. I say need. I mean, the way I would do it is, and, and most common is, you take the index of the page and that becomes the offset on disk where this page lives on disk. Right? So the page number is really critical to know where this thing is on disk because the index is just another data file right, on disk. So with that, then we have 10, 80, 90. So 80 is done. What do we do? 40. What do we go to 40? Okay, let's look it up. Where? Guess what? We're going to split this page again. That is nuts. So you, what are you going to do is you're going to split this page, right? I'm going to put a 40 here. Again, this is a naive implementation. One way you can do it this way, right? You can actually do this or you can put the 80 in that in the other page, right? It all comes down to implementation, nothing else. Like, what do what is best? And I don't think there is a better or worse way, right? But, and, and, and what you need to do is actually, I forgot to mention, this is a B plus tree structure. Again, there's so much stuff here that I didn't draw, right? I, I talked about B trees in my course, database uh, engineering. So essentially, these are actually linked. These pages are linked, right? Because the B plus tree, these has to be linked because I need to find all the other pages and doubly linked actually right so this page points to this page page this point page to, so there's like a lot of references as well between these pages and you need to update all of them sweet all right let's do that again now i'm gonna insert 40 is done let's insert five guess what five has to be before the 10 so again we're gonna do a split right do the five and ten and then put the 40 here, right? Now, you might actually optimize this. Okay, and instead of actually splitting, maybe I can put the 40. Can, do I need to create a new page? Or can I just actually shove the 40 right here? Because there, there is a space here. You can do this. And I'm going to mix and match. I'm going to do the multiple things here, right? So you can do technically what I just did, right? And uh, just to make sure, I'm going to add this guy the link list here there you go i added this link list for you guys 
it seems to be a little bit small so let's make it bigger that's what she said nice all right so now i am going to insert hopefully i don't cover my fights here all right just cleaning up a little bit cleaning up doing a little bit of cleaning and making this a little bit bigger nice nice huh so i didn't do anything just cleaning up things so we insert the five now we insert the 70. Where does the 70 go? The 70 needs to go between the 40 and 80. And again, you have other stuff to balance the tree. Or you have to update the root node, maybe the internal nodes, actually, not necessarily the root. And then finally, you have to insert that. I'm, I'm only talking about the cost to update the leaf pages here, right? So what you need to do here, we can actually just insert the 70 here, remove the 80, override the 80 technically, right? and 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 do the 80 and 90 here right without causing a split but again we need still to update a lot of other references here so let's go ahead and down to the 70 let's go and insert the 60 60 all right where does the 60 go the 60 needs to go between this and this so there's no escape we have to actually split the page here all right 80, 90 go here, 60 go here, 70 is alone, and then we start con continuing, and we're done, right? Do you see wh what happened here? There's a lot of shoveling going up and down, up and down. This is what kills the performance, especially when you, when you, when you every time you want to insert somewhere, and you need to split the page, there is work that, there is I.O. that is happening, right? There is lookup that is happening, yeah? And, and, uh, uh, the you updating the references between between the pages himself yeah? and uh, what also i want to mention is you notice that we were all over the place sometimes we touch this page sometimes we touch this sometimes we touch this sometimes we touch this and this is like what we're adding only seven elements imagine adding a million rows right like you have okay you have a service that just shoves massive amount of uids and that's what happened to shopify by the way shopify used to use uid version 4 and they switched to ulid you know that's another order uh, and i made a whole video about about that but that's basically the problem if you had things that is ordered essentially right you don't have any of this problem right we ready to do this again ordered very simple 10 all right 10 right there boom 20 right after that boom done 30 well all 30 is this page is full good create another page add the 30 boom 50 oh sure we have a page that is free and we have some free space here so let's insert it boom 50 done see very nice sequential right 70 80 right and and no the database cannot ask for any uh better workload than this essentially right? the database loves this thing it dies on this you know on the, on this stuff it loves this stuff right databases loves ordered and again this is all indexes huh if you have, if you're using a postgres and you have a field that is uid and that's not indexed remember postgres does not order or have any clustering by default right so all of this will just go to the end and postgres that's fine in that particular case right so now we talked about rights and how simple and easy rights is and that's what shopify did they switched from this going over the place pulling pages randomly pulling them in there because every time you update something you need to pull it from disk and put it in something called the shared buffer pool which is literally a shared area memory that is shared between all the processes that the database is used right and as a result when you do that there's limited space in this guy right so if you need to pull a new page and you're full your buffer pool you have to flush whatever is dirty or unused or old right because it's literally an L lru last recently used cache right and it just flushes the old thing and that's expensive because what guess what the oldest thing that you think it's old the next uid that is random might actually need it <laughs> and then you just did another fetch and then the flush and another fetch and another flush 
you will be thrashing that's the word people like to use thrashing io because of this randomness but but here if you're inserting thing in sequence and that's what they did shopify labels every purchase order with a unique uuid if you buy stuff they add everything and label everything as a uuid uh to prevent uh to make to to label the request to be to become item potent right so that if you accidentally submit the same request twice they catch it right and if they if you do that then guess what this workload is so beautiful to be ordered instead of uld why and when you are using randomness and you're purchasing purchases a timing issue all of this checking and item potency happens at the same almost minute right if you have a thousand people buying at the same time they are all buying at the same minute you know so technically speaking you are all living here on the tail side of things because at time wise ordering wise but if those requests are not ordered that is the worst thing you could do because now you have an ordered workflow purchases that are random so now what you're going to do is you are unnecessarily fetching and doing io left and right right but when they move to ulid ulid they're all of a sudden their order beautiful the rights they improved i don't know the percentage but it was really good right in that particular case even reads are fast because you know if you're building in that particular case you're reading most of the time if you purchase something you're gonna query it again if you made an accident you purchase again that uld is you're gonna make that purchase within the the next five seconds or one minute uh, let's say one hour accidentally refreshing right so it's still you're within the same tail you're at the tail of things right but my someone might say how about like uh, i'm gonna move my sh url shortener to a ulid well nice for write is perfect for reads you don't know if the, the urls are not url q queries short url queries are not ordered right because you they are completely random right so even if you generate them in order you have absolutely no idea that the first url might be the the busiest right read wise so that's what we need to think about when we think about reads and and writes right shopify hit the jackpot with this they optimized both reads and writes just because their workflow happened to be that way right? so that's what i wanted to discuss guys right you uid version for randomness especially in the index watch out for it so just watch out for mysql in general because the mysql love this uh, you know to have a a unique id by default right and if you use that as a as a random uh, uh if you use that as a uid then remember all the indexes point to the uid so you're uuiding everywhere right this randomness just poison the well as well right and everywhere so just watch out for that right if you don't have this problem you're fine right and again final plug check out my database course if you like this stuff if you like this in-depth stuff database.hosseinnasr.com uh, for a discount coupon see you in the next one you guys stay awesome on this net